The strange disappearance of Zeb Quinn has left Asheville, North Carolina in a stupor for a long time. Asheville, North Carolina is a fast-growing city with a small-town vibe. Known for its many world-famous breweries, it is almost shocking to find out that there is a long, dark history of gruesome crime in this small city. Asheville holds a special place in my heart. I lived there for a few years and even went to the same high school and worked at the same Walmart as the young man we are covering in today's case. For nearly 18 years, the case of Zeb Quinn has remained unsolved. The events and timelines surrounding his mysterious disappearance are truly odd, and quite honestly, at times, pretty damn creepy. Zeb Quinn, like many other high school students his age, had been looking for a new car to drive, to school and to work. On January 2nd of 2000, at around 9 p.m., Zeb had planned on checking out a car he was thinking about buying. Robert Owens, a friend of Zeb, came along in his vehicle and followed Zeb to the lot where the vehicle was for sale. There is surveillance footage of the two teens outside a local gas station at around 9.15 p.m. This would seemingly be the last time Zeb Quinn would ever be seen. So basically, the events leading up to his mysterious disappearance, he is going to check out this car that he is considering purchasing. Mm -hmm. His friend Robert Owens decides to tag along. What's confusing is whose car is he driving? Like, he has a yeah. car already. Is like, there's something no, wrong with his car? The, well, who's Owens I think to him? I think what, what happens is it's Zeb's car. Um, and it's, I don't remember the make and model. And that was moment. confirmed? But it was his? It was his. Okay. It was his car. Um, but was that the car he was looking at? That was the car that appeared at the Mission parking lot. Okay. That was the one. But how do we know that's the one he was looking Wait, at? Wait, but like, was it like his mom's car that he was driving, or was it his car? I think it was his car, because he drove to school, I believe. Owens claimed after the duo left the gas station, Quinn signaled him to pull over. According to Owens, Quinn had gotten a message on his pager and needed to find the payphone. This was before cell phones were prevalent. Quinn was apparently frantic after the phone call. Owens said Quinn canceled their plans to check out the vehicle, and Quinn drove off in a rush, even rear-ending Owens' car in the process. This is where the case starts to get even odder. Owens checked into the hospital later that same night claiming he had been in another car crash, which had left him with multiple fractured ribs and a head injury. This is strange due to the fact that there were no reports of the second crash. We could not find any records by officials or insurance companies. Why did he leave in a frantic rush after that, exactly. after that page? Like, what would make him so frantic that he would crash into the back of his friend's car, potentially giving him those rib injuries, which I want to go back to, how did Robert Owens, did he really get into another wreck that night? How did he actually get those injuries? Like, those injuries seem way more likely that he sustained for, like, under a struggle, yeah. like, and fight wounds, cracked ribs, you know, head wounds. That, so that sudden? Were, that does also coincide with, you know, a car crash. But the way I think about it is, like, why would Zed quit frantically, go, like, drive off frantically and then hit his friend and not even stop and go, like... No, most people don't just be like, oh, that's fine, cool, you hit my car. A hit and run no. to somebody you're close with isn't yeah, likely. Yeah, that doesn't make much it's sense. It's not likely. Zeb Quinn has never been seen since. Two days later, however, someone called into the Hendersonville Road Walmart, where Quinn worked pretending to be Zeb, calling him sick. The co-worker, who had answered the phone call, though, could tell that this was not the voice of Zeb Quinn. Police were alerted and instantly questioned Owens again. He admitted to calling in and pretending to be Quinn, but he claimed Zeb had told him to do so. But why? Why would Zeb have his friend call in sick for him? It seems that once again, Robert Owens is the main suspect. Owens insisted on his innocence though, and maintained that. This case so far seems like it would be a simple and obvious open and shut case. Oddly enough, this case just keeps getting more twisted. The alleged page Zeb Quinn received that caused him to stop at a payphone turned out to be very real. Zeb's aunt did send him a page that night, though it's a bit weird since they weren't very close. The page said she was having dinner with a girl Zeb very much was in love with and her boyfriend, 
Rumor has it, the girl's boyfriend was very much the jealous type. Later that night, the aunt claimed her home was broken into, but nothing was stolen, although a few choice picture frames were moved around. About two weeks later, Zeb Quinn's car was found and recovered in a nearby hospital parking lot. This was the hospital his mother worked at. Inside his car, officials found a mix of strange things. Among these things were strange bottles, a jacket that didn't belong to Quinn, a hotel key card that couldn't be traced, and even more odd, a live Labrador puppy. On the windshield, someone had drawn lips and two explanation marks in lipstick. Zeb Quinn's mother thinks the car was put there for her to find. The belongings found inside have not been traced to anyone or used for anything significant in the case. This case remained unsolved and seemed like Zeb and his family's efforts were lost in time. There's got to be some foul play going on here. I, I, it feels like Something's Zeb. not right. It feels like Zeb was caught in this, the middle of liking a girl who had a bad boyfriend on her side. And Robert Owens is probably the fall guy, maybe, it, because he has a history of this these violent crimes, these violent tendencies with the Food Network stars. Another 15 years go by, and Robert Owens has once again stepped into the limelight. Owens was found with the remains of three people in his wood stove. Making this even more of a big deal, these people were Food Network stars Christina Codd, her husband JT Codd, and their unborn child. You might think to yourself, how would Owens have a connection with these people? Well, apparently the family had hired him to help them work on their home, and even had a strong enough trust in him to invite them to their wedding. This crime was one of the most gruesome the area had ever seen in its history. This crime sparked local investigators to take a closer look and rework the Zeb Quinn case. With Robert Owens being the number one suspect in the Quinn case, there could be something to find elsewhere on his property. During the investigation of the Cod case, officials found fabrics and unknown fragments under a concrete layer. Unfortunately, we cannot say if these findings have anything to do with Zeb Quinn. And apparently, I heard somewhere that there were more bodies in his backyard. Yeah, see, the thing that, like, kind of really started making them look back into the Zeb Quinn thing was they found that fragment of bone under uh, some concrete, but they couldn't, you know, they, they was too small to identify yeah. any sort of DNA or anything. So it's interesting, there could be more bodies. Like, there's not much information on it. Like, like there's really not. I like, I've searched everywhere. Apparently, there, there's plenty, there's plenty of bodies out in the, there, like, his backyard, but, like, there could be some concreted in. Yeah. That you it could be, like, to. a John Wayne Gacy kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's just tons of bodies mixed within dirt, concrete, everything. Robert Owens was tried for the death penalty but pleaded guilty to avoid it and took life in prison instead. So, what happened to Zeb Quinn? Where did he go after he left in a frantic rush? Did Robert Owens really get into another wreck that night, or could those injuries be sustained from a struggle? If Owens did kill Quinn, why? Will we ever have all these questions answered? We may never know. Until this day, the mysterious disappearance of Zeb Quinn remains unsolved. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button as it helps me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day. What did you think about this case? Do you have any info or any ideas of what could have happened to Zeb Quinn? Be sure to comment down below, I would love to see. See you guys soon with another creepy video. Many of you guys ask me all the time in the comments section how you can support the channel outside of giving the videos a like and a subscribe. Well, the best way to do that is checking out the merch store here that you see on screen. 
There's plenty of cool designs ranging from the Park Ranger series all the way down to Swamp Dweller logos. It's much appreciated if you check it out, and I definitely would love to see pictures of you guys wearing your Swamp Dweller merch. So send those in so I can share those in future videos.